Okay. So the webinar has started. Um, it is now 6.30 p.m. and I would like to call the regular design review board meeting of May 5th, 2022 to order. Before I proceed, I would like to take a moment to go over our meeting protocols for today. The South Pasadena Design Review Board meeting scheduled on May 5th, 2022 today will be conducted both in person and virtually via Zoom. To maximize public safety while still maintaining transparency and public access, members of the public can observe the meeting via Zoom. Okay. We'll now move into roll call. So will staff note that the following individuals are present? Board Member Carlson? Present. Board Member Nichols? Present. Board Member Younger? Present. Vice Chair Sai, Present. And myself. We also have Community Development Director Angelica Frausto-Lupo, Planning Manager Matt Chang, Associate Planner Sandra Robles, and Associate Planner Brolio Madrid are also present. And I apologize if I've mispronounced anybody's name. Feel free to correct me at any point. <laughs> Uh, so next, we will move into approval of the agenda. Um, board members, do you have any requests for additions or revisions to the agenda? If so, please raise your hand. All right, seeing none, then we'd like to take a vote to approve the agenda. So would anyone like to make a motion to approve the agenda? Okay, so board member Carlson uh, made a motion to approve the agenda. And do we have a second? Second. Second, excellent. So we'll just go through. Do we need to do roll call for this? Okay, so we'll do roll call. So um, board member Carlson? Sorry, yes. <laughs> board member Nichols? Yes. Board member Younger? Yes. Vice Chair Sai? Yes. And myself, yes. So the agenda is approved. Next, we will move into disclosure of site visits and ex parte contacts. So I will ask each of the board members if um, they've had contact with anyone regarding the site or if they visited the site. Board member Carlson. Uh, Vice Chair Sai. I have not. Board member Nichols. No contact with anyone, but I drove by uh, the house on Palm. Okay, great, thanks. And board member Younger. No, I have not. And I have also not spoken with anybody regarding the projects, nor have I visited the sites. Okay, we will now move into the public comment portion this evening. Um, staff, did we receive any public comments in person or via Zoom for um, item number one? We do have one. Hold on one second. Was that the second one? No general public comments at this time. Okay, sorry, I did, I did skip that, I apologize. Yeah, so for the general, I'll just kind of go over the protocols here of the, of the general, the public comments. So um, in the case that you would like to, if you're on Zoom, and in the case that you would like to make a comment, uh, a general public comment, you just hit the raise your hand button. Um, and then if you are present in the room, you can fill out cards at the entry door there. Okay, so there were no general public comments. Okay, great, thank you. So then the next item that we need to discuss this evening is the design review board reorganization. So I know we are in May now, but we're technically starting a new term. And so we, we need to discuss uh, recommending and selecting a chair and vice chair. So would anybody like to recommend a ch the chair? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to make a recommendation for board member Carlson. <laughs> I will second that recommendation. I, I don't think I have the organizational skills to, to do it. I'd be vice chair. But... Okay, I, that's sorry. That's that's fine. I nominate Samantha Hill to be chair. <laughs> I can second that nomination if you're up for it still. <laughs> I, it is quite a bit of a time commitment, but I am up for continuing the position of chair. Um, in that case, do we have anyone who'd be interested in the vice chair position? I could. Yes. You'd like to take the vice chair? Sure, unless you want to continue. Yeah. Um, you're, you're, I'm fine with 
Would you would you like to continue? Or should I have no preference if, if you okay? I think she should continue. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone else have any recommendations? I'm really happy with you guys continuing on then. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I know you're <laughs> I know you're new, so okay, excellent. So then, I guess in that case, we will. Um, I will continue in the position of chair, and uh, Melissa. Um, so, okay. Okay. Can I make the motion? Is it okay? Okay. So I'll make the motion. So I make the motion that um, myself, Samantha Hill, will be. The, in the position of chair for the design review board and Melissa Hansai will be in the position of vice chair. I, second. I can second that. Excellent, thanks. Chair, Samantha Hill. Yes. Vice chair, Melissa Hansai. Yes. Board member, Joel Carlson. Yes. And board member, new board member, Brian Nick. Yes. Motion carries. Great, thank you. Okay, so we will now move into the public hearing portion. Um, the first item that we have under the public hearing portion is 5002 Collins Avenue. Um, this is to allow the construction of a 105 foot square foot first floor addition to the side of an existing 15, um, 1500, 15, 770,000, sorry, 1,570 square foot single family dwelling within the residential single family zone. So is there a presentation, staff? Yes, okay. Uh, sorry, before we start, um, at this time, I'd like to recuse myself from item number three and four because of um, real property interest within a thousand feet. Great things. Good evening, Design Review Board, Chair, members of the public. My name is Braulio Madrid. I'm the Associate Planner for the City of South Pasadena, one of three. Um, and today I will be presenting to you project number 2421-DRX, uh, located at 5002 Colas Avenue. The permit requires the approval of the design review board to allow an addition of 105 square feet to an existing single family residence. This will enlarge the existing bedroom, bathroom, and laundry room. The proposed project has a categor categorical exemption of class one for existing facilities. The property does have a few building permits on record. The home was originally built in 1941 with an attached garage facing Colas Avenue. In 1958, permits were issued for the construction of a 96 square foot service porch. In 1964, there was permits issued for the remodel of non-structural remodel of the kitchen. And in 2003, permits were obtained to replace rear windows and rebuild uh, part of the rear of the home due to termite damage. 
The last permit on record was in 2013, where the property obtained a building permit to construct the rear patio cover. Aside from the listed permits, the property also has several miscellaneous building permits for mechanical, plumbing, re-roofing, and electrical work. The project site is 11,530 square feet in size. It is zoned residential single family, also known as RS, and surrounded by the same residential uses. The property is located on the northwest corner of Colas Avenue and Hill Drive. This is a picture of the front of the home taken from the corner of Colas Avenue and Hill Drive. Here are pictures of the project area from the front and side perspective. The proposed additions are located towards the north side of the property. The additions will be compliant to all applicable development standards of the zoning code and building code. The proposed addition requires approval from the design review board due to the addition being visible from the public right of way. The proposed addition will increase the size of existing rooms. However, no new rooms will be created as part of this proposal. The total proposed addition will total to 105 square feet. Here are the front and side elevations of the proposed additions. The addition will incorporate features of the current architectural style of the home. The materials include the matching clay roof tiles, windows and matching trim, and the smooth stucco matching col the color of the existing home. The design review board has a few options to consider. The board may approve the project as proposed, approve the project with modifications to the proposed conditions, or continue the project to a future date with desired changes to the conditions or design, or deny the project. With that said, staff recommends that the board approve design review permit number 2421-DRX uh, with the conditions of approval set forward. Thank you. Staff is now available for any questions. And we also have the applicant here if you have any questions for him. Great, thank you. Okay, so we will now, it, let's go into questions for the staff. So board member Carlson, do you have any questions for the I staff? I have no questions, no. Okay, great. Um, board member Nichols? No questions. Board member Younger? No questions. And I also do not have any questions. We're making it easy for you tonight. <laughs> so um, in that case, we will now move into, does the applicant have a presentation this evening? The applicant does not, does not but he is available for questions. Okay, well, maybe it'll be a good idea to bring him to the, to the podium and we can ask questions. Hi, Kyle Emoto, I'm the architect. Hi. How's Hi. it going? Good, how are you doing? Good, good. So do we have any questions for the architect? Board member Carlson. Um, no, in, in the initial packet I got, it didn't show the roof lines, but I see in the presentation, I can see what, that you're just basically extending what's there, right? Exactly, yeah. Currently there's a flat roof of mansard, um, clay tile, red tiles, and we're gonna yeah, replicate that as well. Yeah. Based on that, I have no questions. Okay, great. Um, board member Nichols, any questions? I don't have any questions either. Board member Younger? No, nope, no questions. The only question I had was regarding the roof as well, and mm -hmm. it's clear now. So, yeah. Um, so I also actually don't have any questions. Um, so then in that case, um, did we have any uh, public comments regarding this particular item? The people on Zoom, do you have any questions for the a public comment for the property, raise your hand. No comments at this time. No comments, great, okay. Um, so then in that case, thank you. We will close the public hearing and we'll have a discussion amongst ourselves. So I think we'll just kind of informally, we can discuss it. Um, so just have your microphones on, but I will ask board member Carlson maybe to start off. Yeah, I really have no comments. It seems very straightforward. I have to say I agree too. It's a pretty straightforward addition. 
um, minimal impact, I think, to the facades, the extension of the roof line there on that addition is pretty, it makes sense to me, visually and in, in terms of the massing. I don't know if anybody else has comments. No, no, I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. agree with you guys. It maintains the character and I think it looks it looks good. So um, would anybody like, to, it sounds like we're all in agreement. So would anybody like to make a motion? I would make a motion to approve the project based on staff's recommendations. Excellent, okay, great. Do we need to put say with conditions of approval as well for approval? With conditions of approval. Great, and I will second that motion. So in that case, I will take roll call. So um, board member Carlson. Agreed. Yes. Board member Younger. Agreed. And board member Nichols. Agreed. And myself, agreed. So um, congratulations. Thank you. Your project has been approved. Um, a motion was made by board member Carlson and a second by myself. And so um, you now, I believe that you have a 15, day, there's a 15 day appeal period. Um, and at that time, no construction can begin, but um, congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay, Thank thanks. you, Seth. So we will now move on to the second item under the public hearing, and that is for 1016 Palm Avenue. It, uh, this is this project to allow the construction of a 208 square foot first floor addition, a 158 square foot front porch, a 295 square foot covered patio, and a new 770, 707, 777 square foot, sec, those sevens are messing me up tonight, <laughs> square foot second story addition. Um, to an existing single family home within a residential single family zoned area. Um, actually, does Melissa need, she needs to recuse herself for this one as well, but does she need to come back, recuse herself, and then leave? Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, if she, if she mentioned both. Okay, then in that case, we will let her remain recused. Okay, so. Um, Staff, is, I see the presentation is up. Good evening, board of members. My name is Sandra Robles and I'm an associate planner here in the city of South Pasadena. Very nice to meet you all. This next project is item number four on the agenda. The address is 1016 Palm Avenue and the design review permit number is 2442. DRX. Okay. The project request is for a 280 square foot first floor addition, a 777 square foot second story addition, a 75 square foot back porch that is not enclosed, a 158 square foot porch in the front that is not enclosed, and a 295 square foot covered patio, also not enclosed. This project is exempt um, from CEQA and, um, because it is an addition that does not exceed 10,000 square feet. In this next slide, I will provide a brief background on the property history. The property was built in 1908 and it was remodeled in 1962. The remodel consisted of an addition of a bathroom, a bedroom, a partial front porch enclosure, and a kitchen enlargement. In 1968, the garage, the one car garage, which was original to the house, was demolished, and a new two-car garage was constructed. And in 1988, there was a permit approved for vinyl siding. The subject site is located on the south side of El Centro Street and north of Hawthorne Street, and is on the east side of Palm Avenue. This next slide covers the, the site specifications. The property is located within the single family residential or RS zone, 
surrounding uses are also RS zone. The lot size is 7,500 square feet. The width of the lot is 50 feet. The length of the lot is 150 feet. And the existing house size is 1,355 square feet. The property consists of three bedrooms and two bathrooms. And the garage size is 221 square feet. The slide before you includes three images of the existing property. You are able to see that while the property has undergone multiple alterations, it still has the original architectural features indicative of a craftsman style bungalow. This includes the side gable roof with a center dormer and a large front porch. This next slide is the existing site plan. The existing lot coverage is 30.2% and the floor to area ratio is 19.7%. The proposed site plan provides a bird eyed view of the proposed addition. The proposed lot coverage is 37.1% and up to 50% lot coverage is permitted due to the size of the, of the lot being under 10,000 square feet. The FAR will change to 33.8% and a 35% FAR is permitted. The project will meet all setback standards. The next four slides, I will provide you with a side-by-side -side comparison of the existing and proposed project. This is the front elevation or the west elevation. The existing house is one story and is cladded with stucco. The proposed front elevation will include wood lap siding and a custom craftsman style front door. As you can see, the second story addition will only be partially visible. The east elevations provide you with a rear view of the property. The rear patio is not enclosed and does not add to the FAR. The south elevations further illustrate how the second story is proposed to the rear of the property to reduce mass and bulk. The maximum allowable height is 35 feet. The applicant is proposing 25 feet. Finally, these are the north elevations. The applicant is proposing to change all windows to double hung, which is more characteristic with a craftsman style home. These next four slides are images of the properties on Palm Avenue. The neighborhood has a mixture of one and two story houses. This house is located at 1002 Palm Avenue. It's a two-story house, and it is 2,618 square feet. The neighborhood also has a mix of architectural styles, but the majority of homes are craftsman style. This house is located at 1014 Palm Avenue. It is two stories, and it is 3,387 square feet. This third property is located directly across the street from the subject property and is property number three, 1017 Palm Avenue, and it is 1,205 square feet, and it is also two stories. In total, there are four two-story homes on Palm Avenue. This home is property number four, and it is located at 1037 Palm Avenue. And it is a total of 1,540 square feet. To conclude, the design review board options are, number one, to approve as proposed without changes, 
or number two, to approve with modifications to the conditions and or designs, or number three, to continue the project to a future public hearing and direct the applicant to make changes to the project, or number four, deny the project. Staff is recommending that the design review board approve the design review permit number 2442 with conditions of approval. That concludes my presentation. Staff will be available to answer your questions. The applicant and his, their representative are also here to answer your questions. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so we'll now move into questions for the staff. Um, Board Member Carlson, do you have any questions? I do not, no. Okay, great. Um, Board Member Nichols, any questions? No. No Board questions. Manager? No questions. Um, I think my only question is regarding, I know we just received some information, some packets. Um, it looked like there was a letter of support, an additional letter um, that seemed not in support. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I believe there was four letters in support and one in opposition. Okay. Okay, great. Um, but there's no additional design changes since that point, because I saw there's elevations in here, but these were just... These yeah, there's just replicas of the existing of what we've already have in our packet, correct? That's correct. Okay, great. Thanks. Excellent. Um, and then in terms of other questions, I have questions for the applicant, so but I don't have any more questions for the staff. So thank okay. you. Um, so does the applicant have a presentation? No, but they are here to answer questions. Okay, great. So maybe it would be a good idea for the applicant to come up at this time. Good evening, there we go. I'm Steve Dahl, the architect for the homeowners. Uh, Tammy Callen is our project manager, did all the wonderful drawings. So if you have a really tough questions, we'll bring Tammy up for that. She's more familiar with the technical of everything. And then the homeowners, Jenny and Eric are here too. Their two kids, uh, thankfully did not come along. It'd be tough to have them sit through this. It's fun for adults, but um, it might get old. Um, we're so thrilled to be here. And, and thank you so much to, to Sandra, uh, Matt, and uh, the, the whole team at the city. Couldn't have done it without them. Um, we're so glad that they're here. I'm sure you're glad too. Uh, back when we submitted this in August last year, uh, we really had no, no planning department. So uh, we're all thrilled that, that we're back and, and going and, and getting through this. The Von Cannons, as a lot of us here in town and, and all over the world, through COVID uh, realized spending a lot of time in their home, both working at home and their kids at home, uh, uh, in the home. As architects, we too realized that maybe what we had been designing for many years, and Samantha, you probably saw this too, that that big open space where the family room and the kitchen was all open might've worked before, but when everyone's home 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it, it's just too much. And so I think the Von Cannons realized, and, and the neat thing too, is they'd been in the home for some time. We recommend uh, to a, most of our clients, you really need to be in a home for one full year and go through all four seasons before you should really do anything because you're gonna discover things about the home, the context you may not realize right away. And so besides spending real time in the home and then during COVID, they realized they had these needs. Um, so building the, the second floor to have a, a, an adult retreat is, is really what this uh, was about. The kids have their own bedrooms. But the other thing, and I'm sure uh, you uh, homeowners and, and architects on the group realize that a lot of the older homes here in South Pasadena in the area we, we work with, uh, there's not a good access to the backyard. And when it's just the family, or even when you're entertaining or have family over, it's embarrassing. And so you look at the existing floor plan, the only way to get from the home into the backyard is through the laundry room. And, and you know, there's, there's things hanging and everything. So um, because the master bedroom, uh, primary bedroom, we're, we're calling them now, was in the back of the house, you couldn't cut through that. So by putting that upstairs, it opens up a public area to bring through. And the other thing is that that indoor-outdoor blurring and connection and so it's not just the addition 
but the reconfiguration of the home on the ground floor that was so important. Um, and then uh, from looking at photos or if you drove by or Google Street View is, is so wonderful these days. The, the best part of the house is what they've done, the fence and the little trellis entrance. I don't know if you went by recently, but the roses are going crazy. It's gorgeous. And the bones of the home are, are great. But over the years, as Sandra noticed um, and, and brought up in the permits, it, it's been watered down. We lost all that craftsman character, the detail of the chimney that's there on the north side. There's no fireplace anymore. That's long gone. It's, it's pretty sad. Um, the, the siding, you mentioned there was a permit for um, like a Sears vinyl siding. Thankfully, that was never done, but it's all stuccoed. The, the real siding, whatever was there, our own office is a block away and it's stuccoed. The siding is actually underneath our stucco. Sometimes they would just stucco over it. So we're thrilled and, and it's, it's kind of neat looking at the drawings again this week since we submitted last August. Um, we're really thrilled and excited about this to bring back that, that craftsman detailing, um, but particularly, um, I mean, all the way around, but in the front, it, you know, it lost its front porch. Sandra brought up how it was partially enclosed. You have kind of a part of a porch and what's going on. So now with the new configuration, we have a real front porch all the way across. The other thing you'll notice looking at a photo or the drawings of the home, the front roof is probably the main thing you notice. And that's unfortunate. It might look good when it first goes on, but birds and, and dust and smog and everything. So by putting in the, the full uh, gable, the dormer in the front, it really um, uh, brings in that craftsman feel. So you're not looking at some big ugly vents, but some real windows. They, they are windows, they'll be pretty low down. It's a real kind of crawl space attic. It's not really usable. But the other thing is, and, and again, Samantha and the rest of you know, with a exterior elevation straight on, it's kind of from way up in the air, like a drone view. We really think that if you're out there on the sidewalk in front of the home, you won't even see the second floor because it's set in the back. As Sandra noted, there, there are some nice, right next door, there's a huge big two-story home you can't see it behind the bushes and the foliage. The home to the south, one story home, is also hidden with foliage, but we're gonna be very proud of this. It's gonna still have that one story character, which we're uh, very pleased with, but it kind of brings it up to date and brings back that craftsman feel. Um, we're under and, and within all the guidelines, and I'd love to answer any questions you might have, or Tammy or, or Jenny or Eric, uh, fire away, and, and we're here to answer that for you. Great, thank you, appreciate it. Okay, so we will go into questions then for the applicant. Um, board member Carlson, do you have any specific questions for, um, for Steve? Um, only really just in fairness to this one letter that is in opposition to the project. There's some questions that he has regarding the placement of the air conditioner and some other things. I would assume those are all to code, right? And with the proper setback and yeah, this, this like first surfaced in 2013, and then there was letters back and forth. I, I think the um, homeowners uh, attached a letter in your packet that it was fully resolved in 2014 with the city involvement, making sure double checking everything's to code and it's completely to code, yeah. And then ad additionally, I think you addressed it, but the, I, I noticed in the elevations that the um, chimney was gone. So it's, it, it's, being removed because there's no fireplace? Is there is no fireplace, it's so sad. Um, you look okay. at the outside, it's kind of neat. But one thing that, that we're always concerned with as architects and homeowners, and I've got kids myself, you have all that brick and weight up in the air and it's scary. Uh, in the next 20 years when we have an earthquake, it, it's gonna go over and, and is it gonna yeah. go into the house or the driveway? And without the fireplace in there, um, it, it's time to go. And I think we're bringing in enough other some detailing that's going to be fine and won't be missed. Okay. Thank you. Great, thanks. Um, board member Nichols, do you have any questions for the applicant? Uh, yeah, I was just trying to look through here to see, um, I see some information on the roofing material, just about the materiality of it. Uh, I noticed the sort of the houses around it have kind of certain character and, and coloration and I'm curious and, and maybe it's in here and I just haven't found it, but if you kind of walk us through that. The, the, um, uh, we like doing this with, with the craftsmen. And, and if you drive around or look at books or something, you'll see instead of just all one material, 
were breaking up. So there'll be siding on the ground floor and the shingles on the second floor. It really breaks up the mass. It's nice, it's kind of lighter. And, and they often did that in the Craftsman style back then. Um, it's stucco right now. Um, and, and what we've done over many, many years um, is, is uh, specify a hardy siding. It, um, from, from a couple feet out, once it's painted or, or, or pre-factory finished, it looks just like the wood, you can't tell at all. I don't know if you've gone into say Home Depot or none of us have been anywhere in a while, but back in the day, they, they have a, a glass of water and the hardy siding sitting in it to show it, it uh, it's a cement board. It doesn't absorb water, uh, termites can't get in it. It, it finishes uh, wonderfully. Contractors we've worked with, they can miter the edges and corners. It, it needs a better saw blade, but it lasts indefinitely. There's no maintenance. Uh, you really can't tell that it's not the wood. The neat thing is that the Hardy Company also makes a shingle siding. It comes in the same lengths as the, the regular siding, but it looks like shingles. And so again, it's durable. The other wonderful thing for a homeowner here, um, not so much in the middle of this neighborhood, but you look on the news, uh, whole communities are burned down. The Hardy uh, product has a fire resistance, which I'm really thrilled with too not being a real wood product. So I, I like that. The roof's gonna be all new and that's gonna be an asphalt shingle. Um, interesting here in South Pasadena, the, the color choice is, is not part of the approval process. I guess they figured that anybody can repaint at any time. If I was in San Reno, boy, I've got to give the, the Dunn Edwards color and everything. They're, they're different over there. Um, and I frankly don't know what color they're gonna paint it. Um, uh, but if you'd like to hear that, we can, Bring them up. No, I was just curious because like some of those products come in, in a kind of a pre-finished version. Oh, here she is to talk about color. What? Tell them who Hi, you are. Hi, I'm Jenny Fontana. Nice to meet you. Uh, to answer your question with respect to the roof, it's in your material. Yeah, we, I saw that. Uh, did, you, did you find yeah, it? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Thanks. Did you have any other questions about No, that? no, I, I think that helped. Yeah. Anything about the kids want to ask her? <laughs> no. you're, you're lucky I didn't break that <laughs> Okay. Oh, I saw one of our photos in the packet had some chalk art. I don't know if you noticed that on the paving in the back. That was <laughs> neat to see that. It's a real working home. I don't think we have the most current renderings of the elevations in our packet. Can you bring them up on the screen? Yeah, that would be helpful. Yes. Um, Look. Yeah, I don't think we have anything that shows the specifically the I found them the online site. and and yes. it's just with honor drawing they are uh the most up to date thank you so with respect to this uh the north elevation the the material on the bottom two thirds that's siding correct and is that the hardy board side yes that you were speaking of yes okay and then above that what is the the stuff that that's also like a hardy product and it comes but it's just an overlapping and and like, it's grooved and and again from a distance it looks just like shingles looks it, like shingles. It's re really a great product okay. and then above that will be um real wood and venting um there there are some vents uh, on the home i think in the back or we'll bring that in uh, venting is wonderful and i don't know if you've ever been much through a home or under construction you, you really need to get the air through those um, attic areas moisture is is bad I think it looks good. Do you have any more questions for the? No, I just I really wanted to say this. This isn't in this packet. Okay. Okay. So just do you want to uh, see this set of drawings with that? No, oh, that's okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, board member Younger, do you have any questions for the applicant? No questions. It's a lovely rendering. A nice, nice craftsman going in. Great. Thanks. Um, I think my I did have a question regarding the chimney, but that seems to have been answered. Um, and then. I guess my only question, the materials as well, I think though, I understand in terms of maintenance and durability, it's something that really needs to be considered while uh, traditionally maybe wood shingles would be something that we, we like to continue the look of that. Um, I think that does that with this material. You still have the look, but you have the durability of, uh, of you know, the hardy, the hardy product. So um, I appreciate that. But um, my only other question would be, I guess, just regarding the overall massing. Um, are there, it, it seems that the houses to the south of it, 
those are one story. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. And then the, the, the two properties to the North, those were the, the two stories. And two, then there was two stories scattered the around the rest. Yeah. yeah. And it seems like then the, and the second story is just isolated to the back of the house. Correct. Okay. Okay. Then I, I understand that makes sense to me. That's one, what I thought. I was just trying to make sure. One of the reasons that I didn't bring up, you, you'll appreciate as an architect is, um, on the back, the, the home is newer where the addition is. The front is a very old home. I think the neighbor even brought that up in a letter. And, and you know, stacking on top of an old home is, is very difficult. And so that's another reason why we offset to the back and the side that, that new addition so we can build a new foundation and go straight up from that. Sheer walls, it's not just the weight of a second floor uh, or any house, um, it's the sideways motion of earthquakes. And so we need sections of walls that can support that all the way up. So all it, it kind of complicated, but there's many factors, but I'm just thrilled that we have, you know, instead of a five foot required setback, we have six foot eight and, and it's, it's kind of reduced. And I feel good um, that it's um, not too big and massive. It's gonna fit in really nicely. You, you hardly see it. Great, thank you. Well, that was, um, that was my only question. One oh, you have one more question? question yes. Mm -hmm. um, the the second story addition that is in the back, how far is that? What's that dimension from the front porch back to where that roof line changes? Do you know approximately? Let's see. We it brought looks like a, it's quite a distance, right? It's it's a long way. Yeah. Um, okay. uh, Sandra also had us, thanks, Sandra, do some sections um, so you can really kind of see through the whole home. If you look to the uh, page A8, the, the last a drawing in the packet, you, you'll see a section through the whole home from the front porch uh, through the ridge and then back. Um, I don't know if we have a dimension. I just took my finger like this oh. and um, it, from the front porch, the front of the front porch to the second story ridge beyond is a little more than 50 feet. Okay. Because in the, That's how it, wide it's just the, the nature is. of these renderings sometimes, the, the, it is the line drawing, it looks like in the front elevation of the house, it looks like it's right there, like it's, but it's not. Yeah, um, if you look at the, the photo that she had in there um, at that angle, I, 50 feet back, you're not gonna see yes, it. I, yeah. I would agree with that. Thank you. Great, thanks. It's okay when architect's work is invisible sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Okay, so, um, We'll now open up the public hearing portion. Um, staff, were there any public comments for this item? We do have one uh, public comment here in the chambers. Uh, Mr. Chris Cockcroft. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hey, I'm a next door neighbor on the south side of the house. Uh, I share a, I'm a little nervous. I first um, came to South Pass in about 1969. Um, I then went up north for 10 years and I came back in around 1983 and I moved to South Pasadena. I got a job at SC as a, a assistant professor of librarianship. And um, then in 1985, I bought my house at uh, 1020 Palm. So I've lived here almost 37 years. And I could probably tell you anything you need to know about the uh, neighborhood because I've, well, no, it goes way older than me. Obviously, this house is pretty old, and there are many others that are too. But um, I wanted to just kind of be brief about this, but bring up my uh, little packet, which I sent you. Um, first, I've got the general plan here, and the general plan uh, has a section which is neighborhood protection. And uh, to preserve the scale architectural character, you have it, I'm sure you have, you all have that with you? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. Infrastructure and landscape assets of South Pasadena's established residential neighborhoods, right? And under that, the first thing is prevent mansionization. Ensure the remodeling or infill development or in established residential neighborhoods is harmonious in scale and building form with the context and that, quote, mansionization, unquote, is both avoided and prevented. Uh, this house right now is 1,350 square feet. They're going to bump it up, pretty much double it if you count the porch that they're putting on to cover it. Um, I included the second page there, the north and south elevations, so that you can see 
where the burden of this project is going to fall. And it is, look at, my house is on the south side. So if you look at the south side elevation, you see the existing house, and then you see what they've done to it. And damn, if that isn't mansionization, I don't know what is. Honestly, it will just deprive me of another, a whole view. The entire house will become like blocked in by a big building. So uh, I want to bring that to your attention as uh, factual evidence of the fact that they are mansionizing the house. The last thing I have, let's see, what else do I have here? Oh, I, uh, I brought my original letter, which by the way, was not included in the, in the comment section from the city, okay? There were some positive letters that were put in there, but mine was not. It's not in there, I just looked for it a little while ago. So I included one for you so that you can all have it and you could read my various concerns in there. I'll flag it for you and I won't you know, waste a lot of your time with it. On another subject about Ms. Robles' presentation, Ms. Robles included all the two-story houses. There might be one more. And there's an apartment that has a thing in the back, 50 feet. And can I just finish this? I'll be done in a second. Yeah, you can finish the- Okay, and um, she didn't get any of the single family houses that go all up and down the street. Of If you look at it from the street, um, there's some question uh, about whether it's 70% of the houses are single story on that street or if it's 60%. Now, if you include the apartments in the back, it's about 60% or single story. So she only put uh, two story houses on her uh, presentation to you. So I find that oh, mm, not good. That it mischaracterizes, I believe, what's actually on our street. You've probably all driven down the street. I don't know if you've been there lately. So that really concludes my remarks. I'm very grateful for this time. And uh, I just, no, I think I'll say one more thing. I remember before we had the design review committee, remember when it was established in 89? Remember there was like viral overdevelopment throughout uh, Alhambra and South Pasadena? People got together and they instituted your body, which you're deliberating in right this minute. And that's when it started. And part of the general plan was another part of that response to that viralization of overbuilding. And that was put in the general plan by the people of South Pasadena with exactly a project like this in mind. Thank you. Thank you. So would the applicant like to rebuttal? Oh, oh I apologize. Okay. If you're on Zoom, do you have any public comments? Raise your hand. No public comments at this time. Okay, great, thank you. So then in that case, um, would the applicant like to make any additional comments or provide a rebuttal? Um, staff would like to make a clarification. Um, Thank you. The letter of opposition was originally submitted with the package because it was submitted very early. So you did receive that as part of the staff report. We did. Yes, we received that. I can confirm. It's here. Thank you. So would the applicant like to rebuttal or? Um, I, we will move forward with the applicant's rebuttal. So would the applicant like to rebuttal or make any comments? Any further comments? No. Okay, great. So in this, um, we will now close the public hearing portion and we will have a discussion amongst ourselves. So I just invite everybody to turn on your microphone and um, board member Carlson, would you like to start us off? Um, sure. I mean, I, I understand the opposition, which often people that live next door to a, a remodel are opposed to it. But I do feel that uh, staff has indicated that it meets all the guidelines with respect to um, size of the lot and size of the house. And, and I, frankly, I think it's, a, it's an improvement to the house. So um, I do understand the concern, but uh, I don't have an issue with it. I have to say, I, I agree. I um, Looking at the design, I do feel that it is an improvement and you really 
the character and the style of the craftsman, it's being restored. Um, there's elements of the design that I think it's it's a big improvement. I actually appreciate the fact that the massing, the double story is at the back of the house. It would have been great to see a 3D image or something that shows that to illustrate that it is, but um, knowing drawings and how to read them, and it's, it's clear that this will be something that won't be uh, visually impeding um, from the street frontage. Now, I understand the neighbor's point of view um, and the concern for the, the, double, the double story um, at the back of the house, but um, it's, I agree that it seems like everything was designed very um, thoughtfully and taken into account all the zoning code requirements, so it's, it meets all the requirements. So um, to me, I, I don't see any major issues with it. Um, Board Member Younger? I see. I don't see any issues with it. I, I think it was a, a charming little house and it's, it's a, going to grow into a beautiful craftsman. And having done this myself before, um, I think it's going to be far less offensive to the neighbors than you believe it will be. It'll, it'll be a beautiful home and it's not going to be over facing for I, the neighbors, I believe. Yeah. Thanks. Board member Nicholson, Nichols, sorry. I don't have anything to add. You, you'll. Thank yep. You. Okay. Great. Um, I mean, in that case, I don't know if there's anything additionally that we want to discuss regarding the design. It seems pretty straightforward, and it seems like you know the applicant has been waiting since August of last year just to get here and review this. So you know, and that I I understand that can be painful. So um, we definitely don't want to drag out the process. I would say as well. So if there's any additional changes that we would propose. Um, I think we do this now, and my my recommendation of, is if there are anything any elements we would like to um, possibly recommend that it would be a condition of approval. Can you bring up the front elevation again? These are more detailed than what's in this package. I do feel I, it's they're not the same drawings, so, they, so it's it's a little hard to see. It's probably. West, I'm thinking. Is the front of the house face west? Mm -hmm. That's it. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. I mean, I feel that the no, no, I wouldn't recommend any. Yeah, I feel like the front conditions. porch is a huge. You know, that's an improvement. Extending that front porch, the roof line, um, the gable, like all of these elements are a big, I think a big attribute to the, to the character and the style of the house. What is the material of the, uh, the supports for the posts on the porch? It's painted wood, okay. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so then would anybody, if there's no additional comments, would anybody like to make a motion? We'll make a motion to approve the project. Okay, great. Um, is that to make, a, is that to approve it with the conditions of approval? With the conditions of approval, yes. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, can I get a second? I'll second it. Okay, we got a second. Um, so now we will do a uh, the roll call. So board member Carlson. Approved. Um, board member Younger. Approved. Board member Nichols. Approved. And myself also approved. So um, congratulations. Um, a motion was made four to zero. Um, and we, the project is approved. And there is a, unless, excuse me one second. So the project is approved, it's subject to the conditions of approval, and the decision is final unless an appeal is filed within 15 days from today. No construction or activity may commence during this period and appeal forms may be obtained by the city clerk's office. Thank you. Okay, so we are now closing out the public portion of this evening and we will move into the administration. Um, so do we have any comments from our board members? 
I'll go down the line again. You know, I'll start this way. <laughs> uh, board member Younger. No comments. Okay. Board member Nichols. No comments. No. I would just like to say welcome to the design review board. We're really happy to have you here. And so it should be a fun year. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Um, and then we do not, I don't believe we have any subcommittees at this period of time. Um, so we can go past the subcommittee um, section and we'll move on to comments from the staff. Are there any comments from the staff? Good evening. Good evening, Angelica Frostalupo, Director of Community Development. Welcome, Mr. Nichols, to the Design Review Board. Um, I do have a few comments. I would like for all of you to please put on your calendars June 22nd for our Commissioner's Congress. That will be um, likely beginning at 6 p.m. with the dinner included. So um, as we approach the date, we'll have more details for you. Um, at the Commissioner's Congress, the, each commission will provide a review of the accomplishments from the previous year and some goals for the upcoming year. And if you have not already seen, we do have a strategic plan that's on our website. I'm happy to email it all to you as well. Um, but what we'll do is we'll draft as, at the staff level, we'll draft some potential um, accomplishments for the previous year and some goals for the coming year for you to review at the next meeting, um, which will be at the beginning of June and we'll be ready for the Commissioner's Congress. And um, the next update is that we do have the housing element, the draft, uh, the second draft up on our website. We are still um, taking public comments. So if any of you are interested or anybody from the public is interested, we'd be happy to receive those and comments can be emailed to housing element at southpasadenaca.gov. Um, next, I just wanted to give a little bit of an update on the planning case log. I know we heard a little bit about uh, uh, some comments tonight on that. And um, while we do have um, staff on board, we are still um, recruiting. We have an assistant planner, an offer has been made. Um, that assistant planner is finishing up school right now, so actually will not be available to begin until mid-June. Um, we are also in the process of um, hiring and recruiting for a deputy director. As you all know, Margaret Lynn um, recently left us, and that was a big loss for us. <laughs> We're all kind of feeling the effects, uh, kind of filling in that void but we hope to have someone on board with us soon. Um, and so having said that, the planning case log, we are making some progress, but while we're um, getting cases off, and as you've seen now, we have projects that have come to the commissions, we continue to receive applications. So the numbers are not really decreasing, but at least we're making progress. Um, and um, that's all I have. Thank you. Great, thank you. Are there any other staff comments? Nope. Okay. Um, great. So then in that case, we now will, I will now move to adjourn the meeting. So it is now uh, 7.30 PM on the dot. And so the design review board regular meeting for uh, today, May, May 5th, 2022 is adjourned. And I'd just like to remind everybody that our next regular, regularly scheduled design review board meeting is June 2nd, 2000. 20, 2000 2022 at 6 30 p.m thank you everyone <laughs>